Hello, I'm Lauren Phillips, and today I'm going to talk to you about proportional reasoning for my learning log. In her video, Ruth Beatty notes that proportional reasoning, while hard to define, involves the consideration of numbers in relative terms as opposed to absolute terms. This is because a proportion is an equation that is made up of two equivalent fractions or ratios. For example, 2 to 3 is the same as 4 to 6. They are related and change multiplicatively as opposed to additively, and continue to do so infinitely within reason of the type of problem or situation. They are not absolute or set, but dynamic in nature. The textbook notes that proportional reasoning is both a qualitative and quantitative process. Since the development of proportional reasoning is one of the most important goals of the grade 5 to 8 curriculum, and actually students begin developing this thinking much earlier, I thought it would be a good focus for this learning log. It is also something that I am still learning more about myself. Some of the big ideas around proportional reasoning are that a ratio is a multiplicative comparison of two quantities or measures. When students begin to think of a ratio as a standalone entity separate from the two measures that it is composed of, they are really starting to grasp proportions. Ratios and proportions involve multiplicative rather than additive comparisons. Equal ratios result from multiplication or division, not addition or subtraction. Proportional thinking is developed through activities involving comparing and determining the equivalence of ratios in solving proportions in a wide variety of problem-based situations without the use of rules or formulas. Proportional reasoning is a really interesting concept because it can begin being developed as early as students learn about how there are two groups of four in eight. Perhaps even earlier as students learn to identify the relational qualities of shapes or area. For example, let's consider this image over here. Oops, which is more purple? You might ask a student, A or B? The students are really starting to grasp proportional reasoning if they note that B is more purple than A. And, and this is while they notice that even though the purple takes up the same amount of area, they are noticing that in relation to the overall quantity of each individual shape, that B is more purple than A, relatively speaking. Proportional reasoning is a really important real life skill. And it is used all the time with things like cooking, baking, mapping, graphing, comparing things like distance and travel time. Uh, it's used a lot in physics, science, medicine, and the list goes on. To understand proportion, we must also understand ratio. Ratio is a way of comparing two or more quantities. Ratios can be written in three ways. Three is to two in the word form which is equal to 3 to 2 in the colon form, and 3 over 2 in the fraction form. All this means that for every 3 of something, there is 2 of something. For example, 3 dogs to 2 cats. Proportion, as stated before, is a statement of equality between two ratios or fractions. Something new that I learned recently is that ratios are made up of extremes, which are the outermost numbers, and means, which are the inner numbers of equivalent ratios. So in this one, one to three equals three to nine. The means are the threes, and the extremes are the one and the nine. And a really cool trick to finding out if the statement is proportional is if the product of the means is equivalent to the product of the extremes. If so, then the ratios are proportional. In this case, 3 times 3 equals 9, and 1 times 9 equals 9. So these ratios are therefore proportional. So pretty cool little trick that you can use to uh, check your work if you're trying to figure out um, a certain ratio based off of an, a ratio that you have, or if you're trying to find an unknown. And I'll get into that a little bit more in a bit here. Another really important thing with proportional reasoning is to know that there are two types of proportionality, direct and inverse proportional relationships. Directly proportional relationships have two variables that merge into one another. For example, if I am working for $20 an hour, 
the amount earned increases proportionally to the number of hours worked. On the contrary, an inversely proportional relationship means that as one variable increases, the other variable decreases. The fact that it is proportional means that they increase or de decrease at the same rate. For example, if uh, I'm working for $20 an hour, the amount earned increases proportionally to the number of hours worked. So say I work two hours, I'm gonna make 20 times two, which is $40. And if I work four hours, I'm going to make 20 times four hours, which is $80. So you can see the direct proportional relationship there. An inversely proportional relationship, however, means that as one variable increases, the other variable decreases. The fact that it is proportional means that they increase or decrease at the same rate. So as teachers, I believe it is our job to help simplify and show children that using basic common sense and knowledge that they already have can help them solve and work through seemingly complicated problems more easily. For instance, we have this problem here, uh, which says that if it takes four painters six days to paint a house, how long will it take three painters? So I might ask children what they notice about this question. And they might say, well, the ratio is four painters to six days. And then I might say, how long do you think it will take? If we have more painters, do you think it'll take them shorter or longer to paint the house? And they'll say, well, with more painters, it'll take shorter. And with less painters, it'll take longer. And then with that, I would notice that they are, no, they are aware that this is an inversely proportional relationship. That is, as one variable is getting larger, the other variable is getting smaller. Another thing with inversely proportional relationships is that four to six will also have an inverse relationship of six to four. So that's how I knew that it would take six painters four days. And then another thing to know about inversely proportional relationships is that you're going to be using the same um, constant, but with an opposite action or equation. So where I'm multiplying by two on this side to get eight painters, I'm dividing by two on this side to get the number of days. So four times two is eight painters. How many days will it take eight painters? I know that the number of days needs to go down. So I do six divided by two, which is the inverse of the multiplied by two, and that gives me three days. So it takes eight painters, three days, and I know that the inverse relationship of eight to three is three to eight. So how long will it take three painters? It'll take three painters eight days based on this logic here. So with directly proportional relationships like those we see with baking, where you either want to, for instance, like double or triple a recipe. So in the case of doubling a recipe, you would multiply all the ingredients listed by two. In order to triple it, you would multiply all the ingredients to three. So this is just, that's a very real world example of proportional reasoning that I actually do fairly often with uh, baking and cooking. Uh, but I digress because we're focusing on this problem here, which states that a recipe calls for four cups of flour to six tablespoons of shortening. How many tablespoons of shortening are needed for six cups of flour? And to begin to solve it, I always like to make a little chart I notice that the ratio, similar to the last problem, is four to six, but since this is a directly proportional relationship, the variables are increasing together. And we must perform the same action of either multiplying or dividing. If we're doing one ac that action on one side, we need to do the exact same action with the same constant on the other side. So in the case of doubling, four times two gives us eight cups of flour. In the case of tripling, four times three gives us 12 cups of flour. So I'd multiply six times three, get 18 tablespoons of shortening. To solve for the, how many tablespoons of shortening for six cups of flour, I noticed that six is just 12 divided by two. So go ahead, I would go ahead and divide 12 by two, and it gives us six. So that means we have to do the same to the other side. So divide 18 by two, and that'll give us nine. So for six cups of flour, we need nine tablespoons of shortening. And to check this, we can use the new trick where we apply the means together 
and the extremes of the equivalent ratios. So we have four to six, which is equal to six to nine, which we found. Um, so we'd multiply six by six, get 36, and then multiply four by nine, and we get 36. So that tells me, that's just like a way of checking your work to see if you have an equivalent uh, ratio, and we do. Yeah, this is a little bit of proportional reasoning and ratios in a nutshell. I mean, obviously this is like a really huge topic that goes uh, even deeper into the older grades, get into graphing and algebraic ways of solving, um, which, you know, I could also explain 